My name is Erica and I suffer from nasal polyps. I'm happily married with two children and we're a proud Air Force family. After I joined the Air Force, I started noticing that I was getting the runny nose and the itchy eyes, so I would take over the counter medication to try to alleviate the symptoms and would go see the doctor. By the time I got to my early 30s and I'd been dealing with the allergy issues, that's when the polyps started to be more prevalent and restricted airflow. When dealing with the nasal congestion to the point where there is zero airflow through your nose, it's embarrassing because you're breathing through your mouth all the time and carrying a wad of tissues with you all the time and constantly worried about it. And then I had no sense of smell. It just kind of started to go away rather quickly and my taste buds were affected. So food, there wasn't the same flavors, profiles that you would normally have. It was just sweet, salty, or spicy, and that was kind of the extent of it for me. It got to the point where I would have to ask my husband or my daughter to pick out perfume for me because I had no idea what it smelled like, but I still wanted to be able to wear perfume like I did before. For me as a woman, I, that was something I always enjoyed. I love being outside, I love gardening, we love camping, sitting around fires, all those things that contribute to irritation in the sinuses, and I felt kind of restricted, like I couldn't do those things comfortably or could only do them in small amounts. We did all of every over-the-counter allergy medication you could possibly imagine. We tried various essential oils, uh, vaporizers, I've tried everything, everything. In 2012, I had the polyps removed by an ENT. The recovery was, I just have to say, horrendous. Everything was swollen on my face. My head felt like it was going to explode for a week and a half, and then it tapered. But within a month, the polyps were coming back, and I was back on the same thing of taking oral steroids and over-the-counter medications for the next six years because I didn't want to go through sinus surgery again. And so I just put it off and said, okay, this is my life. This is how it's gonna be. And I wasn't happy with that, but I didn't feel like I had other options. And then my PCM said, you need to go talk to Dr. Cowan. Erica first came to me, I believe in June or July of 2018. She has extensive uh, sinus disease, recurrent polyps. He said, I have an idea. I have something that I think would be perfect for your situation. And that's when he brought up Sinuva. Sinuva works by delivering mometasone, a steroid, uh, directly into the tissue where the polyps are growing. So it's topical drug delivery. It lasts around three months. And it really goes right to the source of the problem. It was an in-office procedure, no long recovery. It was pretty straightforward. When I implanted Sinuva in Erica, she did extremely well. It took roughly 20 to 30 minutes total, including putting the Sinuva in. My sinuses felt more open. And after that, I had a little piece of gauze for under my nose, and that was it. There was minimal blood. And within a few hours, some of that pressure and, and pain when the numbing wears off was already starting to subside. You wouldn't have known I'd had anything done honestly, other than I could breathe through my nose and it felt foreign and strange to me to have all this airflow coming through my nose. I've noticed since I first got Sinuva implanted that I'm able to smell more. I can pick up my perfume. I can cook and actually discern different flavor profiles, which is exciting to me. My husband's he buys me flowers periodically and I've been able to smell some of the flowers and it's just exciting. I'm able to enjoy the things that I enjoyed with my family before the nasal polyps took over, and we get to be outside, barbecuing, uh, enjoying the outdoors, gardening. Sinuva should not be used if you have a hypersensitivity to mometasone furate or other ingredients in Sinuva, or if you have nasal ulcers or nasal trauma. The area where Sinuva is placed should be monitored by a physician for bleeding, irritation, infection, or perforation. Close monitoring by a physician is recommended for people with a change of vision or a history of increased intraocular pressure, glaucoma, and or cataracts. Sinuva should be used with caution if you have existing tuberculosis, fungal, bacterial, viral, or parasitic infection, or ocular herpes simplex because of the potential for worsening of these infections. The most common adverse reactions in clinical trials were bronchitis, upper respiratory or middle ear infection, headache, lightheadedness, asthma, and nosebleed.
go to your ENT, ask them about Sinuva. It's non-invasive, they do it right there in the office, and you walk out same day, and I would hope you would get the same results.